Welcome to the PCFL Show. On this week's episode, we've got highlights from our Week 2 games, previews of Week 3 action, and three quick questions with Anthony Parham of the Delta Ducks. The PCFL Show is brought to you in part by 916 Design Studio. For all your design needs, call 916-747-9255. Also by La Cabana Restaurant in Susun, the best in homestyle Mexican cooking. Call 707-429-5871. Another week, another three quick questions segment to get to know our players. And who's our guest this week? Anthony Burham, Delta Ducks, number 32. Strong safety, free safety. Anthony, welcome to the show. First question, how long have you been playing football? Uh, I've been playing football all my life. Uh, I've actually been in the PCFL for the last three years, going on my fourth season. Other than the game itself, what has football taught you? Football's taught me a lot of discipline, uh, just more character building, and gives me a nice foundation. And if there was one thing in particular, what do you love most about the game? The one thing that I love most about football is being able to go out there and smack somebody. I know it sounds a little violent, but I mean, as a defensive player, I have that mentality. Um, a lot of people who know me in the community will say that they can never see me doing that, but when I get on the football field and put that helmet on and that 32's on my chest, I become Superman for sure. Thank you, Anthony, and good luck with the rest of your season. Now let's get to the highlights. The Reading Heat start out moving the ball on the ground, but there's a fumble and the Jaguars recover the loose ball. And a few plays later, Dale Mario Williams takes it in for the touchdown. And Bergendahl puts the point after through. Later in the quarter, Ronnie Small hits Dale Mario Williams again for a touchdown. And in the second quarter, Small rolls out and finds Brenton McCrary slipping underneath for the touchdown. Missed Opportunities was the name of the game for Redding, who had trouble executing under the pressure that the Jaguars were bringing. And with 3.24 left in the half, Ronnie Small hits Dwayne Smart for the touchdown. And later in the third quarter, Small keeps it himself and takes it in for the score. And in the fourth quarter, Redding starts to shut the run down. So the Jags take to the air and cap the scoring as Robert Arthur hits David Cuslidge for the touchdown. And your final score, Central Valley Jags 49, Redding Heat nothing. Midway through the first quarter, the Giants get on the scoreboard first when quarterback Marquez Shaw hits Deshaun Hosey Jr. for a 25-yard touchdown. And the point after is good, 7-0 Giants. And in the second quarter, Terrence Gentry takes the toss, but looks up and hits Deshaun Hosey Jr. for the touchdown. The point after extends their lead to 14. The Assassins start driving, but a bad snap puts them back in third and extra long. And that's when Carlos Ortiz heaves it, and Mike Harris makes a spectacular catch down the sideline. Unable to take advantage, the Giants' defense disrupts the Assassin offense, and the drive stalls as Robert Holden picks the ball off. and we go to the half, 14-0. The Assassins start the second half by moving the ball down the field and Earl Williams comes up with a big reception down the sidelines. That leads to the quarterback sneak for the touchdown. The point after is good and the Assassins pull within seven. But the Giants answer right back as Marquez Shaw hits Hosey Jr. for his third touchdown of the day. And Carlos Ramirez puts the point after through. The Assassins had some opportunities, but the Giants' defense stiffened up when needed. And late in the fourth quarter, Robert Bolton grabs his second interception of the day, keeping the Assassins out of the end zone. The 
The Giants ran the ball out behind a couple of big runs from Terrence Gentry, and your final score is Golden State Giants 21, Bay Area Assassins 7. Midway through the first, the Barnstormers are driving, but a bad snap results in a fumble. And a few plays later, Cody Allen drops back, rolls out, and hits Keith Shankle for the touchdown. Later in the second, Cody Allen hits Tim Lang for his first touchdown of the day. In the second quarter, the Barnstormers are in Ducks territory, and Jamie Jensen hits Randy Lambert, which sets up this field goal from Alex Vaca. On the ensuing kickoff, Michael Conway takes the ball and takes it the distance. With less than two minutes to go in the half, Cody Allen hits Tim Lang for another touchdown. A minute 10 left in the half, the Barnstormers get the ball back, but it's fumbled and recovered by the Ducks. The Ducks are looking to take advantage of the mistake, but Kenny Mills makes an incredible grab to pick the ball off. The Barnstormers are looking to get in the field goal range before the half ends, but the ball comes loose. And that sets up a Mort Guyvet 45-yard field goal to end the half. On the Ducks' first possession of the second half, Cody Allen hits Tim Lang on the slant, and he takes it 83 yards for the touchdown. Later in the quarter, the Barnstormers are driving again, but Jamie Jensen does not see Sid Thompson, who picks the ball off and turns it upfield. Fourth quarter, the Barnstormers are in the red zone again, but the ball is deflected, and Sid Thompson comes down with his second of the day. And that sets up a 39-yard field goal from Mort Guyvet. And your final score, Delta Ducks 40, Central Coast Barnstormers 3. The PCFL Show is brought to you in part by Graves Video Production. Capture life's great moments. Go to gravesvideo.net. Also by HostedSports.com, the only one-stop place for all sports on the web. You are watching the PCFL Show with your host, Angry Mike. The Outlaws get on the board first on their opening drive with this six-yard touchdown run. The point after is good, and it's a quick 7-0 lead. The Outlaws strike again in the second quarter as Andrew Betancourt hits Terrell Woodall for the touchdown. The point after is good, and it's 14-0. And on the ensuing kick, Anthony Royal takes the Stallions all the way down to the Outlaws' 38-yard line. Stallions get the ball to the 10, but the Outlaws sack Kevin Vi for a 10-yard loss. And Danny Betancourt connects on a 38-yard field goal, and they go to the half 14-3. Late in the third, an Outlaws bad snap and a tackle for loss by Ron Birdsall and Chet Maxim ends the quarter. Still the same drive in the fourth. The Stallions come up big with a deflection in the end zone on fourth down. And Kevin Vi connects with Anthony Royal for a 42-yard touchdown pass. Stallions go for two, but the pass is broken up. And your final score is East Bay Outlaws 14, South Bay Stallions 9. Early in the first, the Rhinos are set to punt, but a bad snap puts the Fury in the red zone with an Anthony Edwards recovery. That sets up a one-yard touchdown run by Derek Morrison. The Rhinos are set to punt again, and Cisco Ragsdale receives it for the Fury and takes it all the way into the Rhinos' red zone. That sets up a 32-yard field goal by Nick Whitaker. The Rhinos start to drive, and on second down, Sean McCauley hits John Mosley for a touchdown. Another bad snap on a punt gives the Fury great field position. And three plays later, Blake Morey scrambles, rolls out, and hits Obi Ngumezi for an amazing 23-yard touchdown grab. And with
with less than a minute and a half, the Fury moved the ball 79 yards, capping it off with this touchdown pass to Terrence McGee as time expired. The opening kickoff of the third quarter is taken by Cisco Ragsdale, who cuts across and takes it up and takes it the distance for a touchdown. The Rhinos then go on the attack. They put together an eight-play drive capped off by Sean McCauley hitting Rico Donaldson for the touchdown. Beginning of the fourth, the Rhinos are in striking distance, but on first down, Tyler Brunn picks it off for the Fury and goes 86 yards for the touchdown. And on the next possession, Noel Alexander Johnson hits John Mosley, who takes it the distance for a touchdown. The Fury have a good run back, and that sets up this second touchdown run by Derek Morrison. And later in the quarter, the Rhinos cap off the scoring with this Noel Alexander Johnson pass to John Mosley. And your final score, Capital City Fury 45, California Rhinos 27. Let's take a look at our performers of the week. You're watching the PCFL Show. Let's see what's in store for us for week three. The Stallions have the bye this week, so we'll see their previews next week. After an impressive week one win, the Rhinos had a good showing and a loss this past week. Can they shore up their special teams and bounce back for a victory this week? The Assassins need to get momentum moving their way. Co-owner Obi Rigmaiden said, we need to practice harder, execute, and maximize production in the red zone. The California Rhinos take on the Bay Area Assassins 3 o'clock at Duker Stadium, Pinole Valley High School. The Barnstormers have started this season in a very un-Barnstormer-like fashion. They've had opportunities, but can they exploit them instead of turning the ball over? The Solano Chiefs dropped their first game and had a bye in the second week. Were they able to make adjustments and tighten things up to come away with the win? The Barnstormers take on the Chiefs this Saturday, 1 o'clock kickoff at Thacker Christian High School in Vacaville. Sponsored by Stars Recreation Center, the premier bowling and entertainment destination. The Golden State Giants have started the season with two wins at home. Are they going to be able to take this show on the road and keep momentum going their way? The Heat have had a rough first couple of games. Opportunities have been there, but turnovers and execution have plagued them. Will this be the game that helps them turn it around? The Giants take on the Heat this Saturday, 6 o'clock kickoff at Shasta College. Sponsored by Bud Light, the sure sign of a good time. Please drink responsibly. Two 2-0 two teams, only one's going to come out the winner. While there's still room for improvement, the Capital City Fury have shown they can be solid in all three phases of the game. The Central Valley Jaguars have put up 79 points in two games. How will they respond to what could arguably be their toughest task yet? The Capital City Fury take on the Central Valley Jaguars this Saturday, 5.30 Walker Park in golf. After many late roster additions in the preseason, the Outlaws are starting to find their stride. Can they build enough chemistry and familiarity with one another to come out with a victory? The Delta Ducks came out hot and are looking to prove something against a team whose new additions they are fairly familiar with. The East Bay Outlaws take on the Delta Ducks this Saturday, Del Oro High School, 5 o'clock kickoff, sponsored by the Onyx Club of Roseville. Well, that's it for this week's episode. I want to thank everybody for watching the show, and I especially want to thank everybody for sharing those links on Facebook. The more we can share with friends and family in the community, the more people we can get to our games. Also, check out the PCFL.com for all the latest info. I'm your host, Angry Mike, and I'll see you next week.